Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021 Day 6. I'll be doing the puzzles really quick in a time lapse and then I'll be explaining the problems. As usual, the code will be in the GitHub, GitHub, GitHub repository, which is linked to down in the description. So without any further ado, let's get started with part one. All right, got my answer. Let's paste it in and let's go. Part one is done. All right, I've got my answer now and submit. Let's go. I got it correct. So now it's time to explain the problems. Day six, lanternfish. The sea floor, the sea floor is getting steeper. Maybe the sleigh keys got carried this way. A massive school of glowing lanternfish swims past. They must spawn quickly to reach such large numbers, maybe exponentially quickly. You should model their great you should model their growth weight to be sure. Although you know nothing about this specific species of lanternfish, you make some guesses about their attributes. Surely each lanternfish creates a new lanternfish once every seven days. So then it gives descriptions for how exactly these lanternfish reproduce, and it actually quite explicitly states that the lanternfish are represented by a list of counters, and these counters are counting down the days until they will spawn another lanternfish. Whenever a lantern, I guess for every day that goes by, all of the counters decrease by one. If a counter is zero, then it gets reset to six, and it also creates a new lanternfish whose counter is eight, because, you know, children lanternfish obviously take longer to grow up and start producing new lanternfish. So the question is, after 80 days, how many lanternfish will there be? Uh, maybe I didn't explain this um, that well. Hopefully it was clear, but the link to the puzzle is down in the description if you want to revisit all of these rules. Um, they give a pretty nice example here. Good to check your input against. So this is a pretty standard simulation problem in my opinion. Um, basically we just keep track of a list of lanternfish, uh, I guess the counters, and really important I guess is understanding how the problem actually works and working out perhaps a few examples by hand. So we have here three, four, three, one, two. We can just keep this as a list or an array in your language of choice, and then repeat this step 80 times. Um, decrease everything by one. So everything gets decreased by one here. Step two is to reset zeros to sixes. And also add an eight. So this zero would become a six and it would produce an eight. And in code, I guess this is pretty simple to simulate. This is what I did. I just read in the inputs as you usually do, turning the strings into integers and then repeating the step 80 times, which is going through everything, replacing zeros with sixes and adding an eight, and then otherwise just decreasing it by one. At the end, we're going to have a pretty long list. So for example, my list was of length, okay, 350,000. So it's a pretty long list, but if you get the length of the list, you can get how many lanternfish there are. So part one, direct simulation works pretty well. Uh, but then for part two, we actually have to be a little bit smarter because part two is just extending upon this idea. Instead of doing 80 days of simulation, we do 256 days of simulation. And even in, the, in this example, the numbers can get pretty large. So this number is, for example, uh, 200, no, 26 billion or something. Yeah, it's 26 billion. So obviously creating a list of length 26 billion is going to be quite infeasible. So we have to find a better way to do this. Now you may already have noticed um, and you may have implemented this for part one perhaps, uh, but what we can do is take out some of the redundancy. So in this example over here, we have two threes and these two threes are going to do the exact same thing. These lanternfish are essentially identical. So instead of repeating them twice in the list, what we can just do is create a dictionary or a map, um, whatever is appropriate in your language of choice. The keys are going to be the clocks or like the clock values. And then the value is going to be their number of occurrences. So three, I mean, there's two lanternfish that have a clock of three. There is one lanternfish that has a clock of four. There is one lantern fish with a clock of one, and there's one lantern fish with a clock of two. So we can just keep track of this map to reduce some of the redundancy in our list. 
Now, hopefully that idea is clear enough. How do we actually implement this in code? Well, I'm using Python, so I use the structure default dict, which is basically like a dictionary, except it allows you to access value. Uh, it allows you to access keys that haven't been created yet. So as a demonstration, when I'm reading in the input and I construct the initial frequencies for the clock values, um, I directly, and I, they're, they're initialized directly when I like access them. So this line is totally valid, even if um, the clock value is not a key yet in the dictionary. So using default dict is uh, very useful. Uh, and now we do the same thing as part one. We update n times, I guess, or like number of days, number of times. So 256 in this example. We create a new dictionary to store the new frequencies of the clock values after this day. And what we can do is loop through our current clock frequencies. Um, if it's a zero, then we do the same thing as part one, except slightly different. We, in the new frequencies, all these zeros are gonna become sixes. So we just assign that to, we assign the current frequency to the new frequency because all these zeros become sixes. And we also uh, create some eights. And we can do a direct assign here. Actually, we can do direct assign here is for all of them because the new frequencies are only going to contain uh, sixes and eights initially uh, when the zero case is handled. Actually, that might not be true. Um, maybe seven is handled first and all those sevens become sixes, so we actually might need that plus equals over there. Um, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, that's fine. You just need to get the gist. So all of these zeros become sixes and create some new eights because there's not gonna be any eights left over why we can use equals. Otherwise, we can just assign all of these uh, current clocks, current clock values to clock values minus one. So like, for example, all the fives becomes fours and so on. At the end, we can just assign the old frequency. I mean, I mean the new frequency to our old, what am I saying? The new frequency to our current frequency. And again, this is just keeping track of the frequency of the clock values in all the fish to reduce redundancy. At the end, we're going to have some big dictionary. Actually, it's a quite small dictionary, so I'll actually print it out for you. Um, and this is ideally only going to contain length eight, so there we go. You can see, uh, I just pretty printed it here for you. You can see that zero is like a billion, one is a billion, or maybe this is like 14 billion. I don't know, these are big numbers. But you can see the frequency of all the clock values in these fish. So instead of having to have like 14 billion zeros in our array, we just know there are 14 billion zeros in our array, and we just manipulate that as we like, and that produces the correct answer. So yeah, today's puzzles were quite simulation oriented, in my opinion, because you do have to simulate them. There's nothing like, there's no smart math or anything about them. But I think today was the first day of 2021 where part two extended upon part one by just making the input size bigger and asking you to come up with a more efficient solution. So. I initially could have done the efficient solution for part one, but I did some analysis and it turns out if you do 80 days of simulation, nothing bad is going to happen. You're only going to get something like length a couple thousand, um, as we saw. But for part two, I did actually need to uh, make the solution more efficient. So uh, we're probably going to get a lot more days like this, um, reaching back on last year's experiences of where part two is going to force your solution to become more efficient. So I'm gonna leave both of them like, like so. Um, the solution to part two is going to also work for part one, but I'll just leave the naive solution here uh, just for reference. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's puzzles. If you have any questions or comments at all, feel free to leave them down in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed today's puzzles. I know I certainly did. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you tomorrow for day seven. Thanks for watching.